Yes. So now let me introduce you to Erico. Erico Ortiz was born in Puerto Rico and came to Milwaukee as a baby. He grew up in Milwaukee where he attended public school and graduated from Marquette University to become a Spanish teacher at Riverside University High School. He acquired a master's degree from UW-Milwaukee in multicultural education and administrative leadership, which led to his more than 20 years as an administrator at several Milwaukee high schools. Throughout his life, theater, dance, and music made a tremendous impact on Erico. Upon retiring in 2011, Erico pursued visual art as a new hobby. It led to his involvement with several arts organizations. And in 2014, he converted a former funeral home into an art gallery and theater venue called Inspiration Studios here in West Dallas. Erico has received several awards as an actor, director, and now as an artist. He has served on several arts related boards and committees in Milwaukee and also now in West Dallas. And I'm delighted to welcome here, him here tonight. Erico, take it away. Yay! Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> appreciate it. I appreciate all of you being here. Um, and again, for those of you who, whose faces I can't see, I, I can see names. Oh, there's Carlos, my nephew just logged in. And uh, um, uh, uh, so if you, if you want to do the video thing, you got to click that video icon. And is that Susan Balji? It is. That's Susan Balzi up there in the corner, uh, <laughs> waving. So um, yeah, so keep in mind your your microphone should be muted in case you know your phone rings or doorbell rings or your dog starts barking that sort of thing. And uh, and when you're ready to ask a question, you can certainly unmute it or you can click the um, uh, the chat box and type a question in there. And, 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 uh, and Sarah will monitor that. Um, there is something in the chat box right now. Sarah, I don't know if you want to see it or if I... Oh, uh, that's Lisa. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Got it. Okay, thank you. I don't know how I close that. I don't want to... I don't want to... I don't want to... Okay, well, that's okay. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, anyway, so thanks for joining me. It's so nice to see some familiar faces and uh, some that I haven't seen in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Susan's giving me the uh, double palms here. Um, so for those of you who who don't know me, but most of you I think might, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm now doing visual art and theater and all of that's kind of taken over my life after years and after years and years as an educator, 33 years um, and a school administrator. And now the arts is what my life is all about. So I'm going to... Um, there were different ways to approach this whole topic of uh, painting your emotions. And some of you have participated in some of our painting events at Inspiration Studios in West Dallas, um, and others of you haven't. So uh, I've tried to figure out what's a way to organize some of my, my, my ideas and my, my, um, um, my, my paintings. So um, I'm going to turn on this screen here um, a slide presentation, basically. Um, and so that's what you're going to see. And I, I can kind of see some of you in the right side of my screen here. But uh, um, if you've got questions, certainly raise your hand or turn on your microphone and speak up. Um, and 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 we'll we'll go that way, go that route. Uh, but God, I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> this is cool. Inspiration Studios, uh, as Sarah just mentioned, is that in, um, in West Dallas, from a little funeral home that, that I purchased. Uh, oh, gosh. We opened uh, March 1st of 2014, so it'll be seven years. And boy, oh, boy, it's been quite a ride. Um, and uh, And there we go. Um, so a uh, little more of my history here real quickly. In 1998, while I was uh, a school administrator in the Milwaukee Public Schools, um, I, I took a leave, went to UWM, and, and um, because, I had a, because I had done theater and dance and music and had not really had a chance to explore visual art, um, I, uh, I thought, okay, it's time to do something with visual art. So uh, that's 
I went and took a whole bunch, 20 credits, grad credits in visual art. And I think Mandy was, uh, Mandy was in one of my classes, weren't you, Mandy? Uh, yes, she's nodding, yes. Uh, we were in a couple of classes together, at least one or two. She was working on her, uh, um, her degree and I was just doing an, a sabbatical. Um, so one of the things that I kind of, I tend to do, sometimes there's an idea in my head, a project, um, and, and, and the challenge for me often ends up being how to get that idea or that uh, project onto a canvas, onto paper, onto, well, a canvas like this lovely one back here. Um, and, and so I play a lot with colors. I, I certainly love that. Um, if, if there's a thought or an idea that I want to get across in thought, I may actually include words in the piece. But, uh, but the colors are, are, are my big thing, I, I'd say. And, um, and you're going to see through here that uh, through this presentation, at least that some of my, uh, I, I'm still learning, I'm an expert, I'm, I'm self-taught. Um, and, uh, and it's been fun just exploring and learning and, and discovering things. And, uh, and, and you'll see that, you know, what, what started off as a hobby in 2012, which is when a year after I retired, I had to figure out what to do with myself. I started painting and, and now, boy, oh boy, the arts have taken over my life. So um, I thought I would, we would do this in terms of emotions, you know, and how many emotions do we experience in a minute? in an hour, in a day, in a month, in a lifetime, you know, uh, I mean, from one second to another, you know, the idea of being um, exuberant and joyful, whatever, and suddenly one thought or one song on a radio or one a TV program you're watching or, or just a, a word or expression somebody says, and oh my gosh, your emotions change on a dime, right? You know, it can just turn and suddenly it's like, whoa, the sad memory or this, you know, whatever comes comes to mind then. Um, the, um, there's a couple of things. I just looking up different emotions and are there a basic set of certain number of emotions? Well, here's a couple of things on the right side here. Robert Plutchik is an American psychologist and professor studying human emotions. And he came up with eight distinct basic human emotions some time ago. And then, uh, you know, happiness, anger, acceptance, acceptance is an emotion. That's an interesting one. Sadness, disgust, uh, anticipation, fear, surprise. In the 70s, the psychologist Paul Ekman identified six basic emotions that he suggested were universally experienced in all human cultures. And those were happiness, fear, sadness, surprise, disgust, and anger. And then later expanded expanded to include pride, embarrassment, shame, and excitement. Well, I'm I'm fascinated fascinated by this because you know here you can see another a chart that I came across, and it's got so many uh, emotions listed here. And I you know I try to find the ones that really mean something to me. Uh, vigilance as an emotion just seems I don't know like a weird title to me, vigilance as an emotion, I, unless that's like, uh, you know, the idea that you're, you're in a, walking through a dark tunnel and you're wondering if somebody's going to jump out and attack you. I don't know what that <laughs> vigilance is, or that, I think that would be fear, you know, I think that would be fear, but, but maybe not, maybe vigilance is a better word for fear. Uh, and then again, fear on the bottom right here, it says fear and surprise and awe, or fear and apprehension. So there's a lot more here and a lot more than these, I'm sure that someone else may have come up with, but I thought this was quite colorful and quite a nice representation of emotions um, and, uh, and, and using the color wheel, <laughs> uh, I thought was kind of interesting. So I, I've, I'm going to just talk about a few of these. Um, and again, if you've got a question, interrupt, please do. Um, so happiness and joy. These are a couple of uh, pieces that I, um, uh, you know, that I created right off the bat when I started painting. Uh, this one's called Now Sing on the left, and the second one is called Lifeline. Um, and I'll, I'll now sing. This was an early attempt at, at, at abstract. You know, when I was, at first I was, I was painting with, uh, uh, trees and, and things like that. And all of a sudden, I, I grabbed a canvas one day and I just started going crazy with, with some blues and some whites and some tan and whatnot. And then the more I played with it, 
the more I, um, I saw something in there. And as an abstract piece, um, what I saw was a choir, you know, and, and, and I don't know if you can see it, but, you know, think of choir robes and blue and white and, and maybe here there are the books they're holding or the folders with music. And so here I'm explaining the abstract art to, to you, you know, piece of abstract art, but it's what I saw. And that's why I called it Now Sing. Um, one of the cool things about this was that it was, um, you know, I started posting my artwork on Facebook and, and, and just asking people eh, what they thought. And this one just thrilled people. They were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, and, uh, and I had someone at the Grand Avenue Mall, there was an art gallery there, um, that I had gone and taken a bunch of pieces to just to see what, what the person, the owner of the art gallery would think of my art and what suggestions she might have for improving. And she took this baby and put a gold frame around it and sold it to um, a, uh, the leader of a rock band who happened to be in Milwaukee performing at, um, at uh, oh, what's the place down on 4th Street? Turner Hall. They're uh, Cat Marshall, Cat Marshall, Cat Power, Cat something. Um, and uh, the woman fell in love with this thing and ended up purchasing it. So it's sitting either in a um, in her home in Europe or in Florida. I can't remember which of the two places she was taking it to, but I was thrilled that uh, a piece of mine was selling to an art, uh, to a, a musician, a singer. Um, and, Erica, we yes. do have um, a few comments. I don't know if you yeah. want to read them, yes. but yes. Uh, yes. they have so cool and so neat. And another person said, reminds me of a birch forest. Oh, birch forest. Well, trees that are also look like they're, uh, yeah, I, I can see that. that that's great. <laughs> um, yeah, certainly comments are like that are wonderful. Um, I, I like the feedback, obviously. Yeah, we all like the feedback. Um, I attended a conference. Uh, I'm uh, for for those of you, some of you know that um, I've got a background in Catholic in the Catholic Church, very much so. Uh, so much so that I had considered, you know, the religious life and for for a while, and um, and directed a church choir for 40, 40 years or so. So I'd go to these conferences, a Southwest Liturgical Conference, and during a presentation in 2017 down, uh, I don't know if it was in New Mexico or if it was uh, in Texas, I can't remember where that conference was. Um, and one of the presenters said this, made this statement, music is the outburst of the soul. And I just thought it was such a cool, cool, cool expression that I, I thought I, I got to do something with that. I, you know, you go to these conferences, you go to, um, and, you know, those of you who, who have done these sorts of things and educators in particular, and whatnot, you go to conferences and you take notes and you, you know, to get ideas and listening to presenters and you're taking notes and whatnot. And then I got to ask you, how often do you go back to those notes and look at them? You know, I mean, I, I don't. Once in a while, maybe, if it's something that I know that I need to use in a classroom or in an observation for a teacher or, or to share in terms of another presentation. But otherwise, it sits in a folder and that's it. So I decided a few years back going to these conferences that I would simply take a uh, sketchbook. And so during these presentations, I'd be inspired by that sort of a phrase like that um, made by the presenter. And I'd write down the phrase and I'd start sketching. And because it was in the Southwest, these colors came to mind, um, this kind of a chalice. Um, and and uh, uh, I, I just, that's what inspired this. And it was, uh, it was a joyful sort of thing when I uh, uh, did these sorts of things on the road that were always done with watercolor. Um, I do a lot of um, mostly acrylic work and, and some watercolor. The watercolors have been fun. Um, that was new for me after oh, about five years of painting. I started doing watercolor and, um, and really enjoy it. Um, so that's what inspired this. Um, and then, you know, as part of keeping, keeping with this whole theme of, of, of joy and happiness, um, I created this piece on the right called Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving a few years back. 
uh, I think it was 2012. I think it says it in the bottom there. Uh, you maybe cannot see it. I don't know that I can either. Under my signature, I think the year is actually there. Um, and I spent that Thanksgiving in um, in Madison, um, and I took art and canvases with me. And this thing just sort of evolved. Um, and I saw as I was creating it, I saw a chalice forming here, and I saw a plate and and maybe utensils or whatever. Um, and so it, it became Thanksgiving. It just, that's what it turned into. Um, and then on the, the one on the left was done, I think that same year at Christmas time, I wanted to do something um, that reflected the Holy Family. And again, looking at abstract art and me explaining abstract art, you see what you see. But I'll tell you what I created, what my intention was, you know. Um, I saw Mary and Joseph and the baby, Jesus, and maybe an angel looking over them. And that's why it became family. That's, that was what, what inspired that title. The painting came first and then the title came afterwards. Um, and I know this is one of Casey's favorites. <laughs> She's probably nodding. Yep. Yep. Erica, yes. I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, so somebody's asking what the colors mean for you. Well, I um you will um that's a very good question. Um in terms of, of when I started painting, I was intrigued by mixing and blending of colors and how they how they meld together and how they create special effects and whatnot. And so um, in this case, that's one of the things I did. These are uh, in family, well, and the other one too. All those circular pieces, all those things, that's a, a, a paste, a mold, a, um, a gesso paste that I put on top of the canvas. So, so uh, dripping and dropping and smearing and whatnot is what, what those are. And then they became their own, um, their own colors you know, to stand out. I guess. Um, in terms of the colors themselves, th there's not a lot of meaning in, in terms of these, in terms of color. I just love color. Um, Thanksgiving, um, uh, uh, how would I say this? Um, the, 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 the joy, the happiness for me is the whole sense of color and being able to use color and manipulate color to create these effects. Um, so in terms of these pieces themselves, it's just part of the whole happiness thing and colorful, the colorfulness for me is the exuberance and, and showing excitement and, and whatnot for life. Um, when I get to other pieces that are in here in this presentation, you'll see that um, colors started changing after a while. I mean, lifeline, this was a fun piece to create. Can, I, um, can we go back a slide? Yeah. yeah. Um, so somebody, I think the one before this one. Okay. Somebody had a question about the boat in the um, yeah. In this one. You know, <laughs> you know when I created this, it was um, uh, you know uh, music is the outburst of the soul, and one of the uh, part of all this is is you know immersion and water and baptism and, and all that sort of thing and and uh, you know you can either dive into it or you can swim away from it you can avoid it or you can be part of it and uh, and so I don't I, I, I in my in my thinking creating this um, I I I guess I was um, you know if I was in that boat. Um, I guess the idea for me would be that I'd be swimming toward that, um, you know, toward that waterfall, let's say. Um, I, 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 I'm fascinated by waterfalls and, and whatnot, and, and even though this isn't a waterfall, um, I do have a photograph um, of, of me standing under a waterfall in Utah in, uh, near Brigham Young University, um, and, uh, and it's an amazing feeling having that that rush of that water pounding on you. Um, so so that's that's what that is. It's the idea of either either you're swimming toward it, you're going toward it, or you're going away from it. And I, um, I yeah, I guess I give the the viewers the option. 
you know. On the so, same, same yeah. um, slide, yeah. we yeah. have another question about the roots. The roots stemming from the the chalice that you're talking about? Yeah, it's a chalice. And uh, <laughs> so, so you know, the, there's a certain the base of the chalice. It could be seen as a base of a chalice or also a root and the root of, of this, of, of what, what, what creates our soul and our soul system, our, our, um, uh, our inner workings and whatnot. Um, I, uh, I wanted it to be, abstract enough so that people could interpret it on their own but yeah it's a root system but it also might be just the base of this of the chalice and that's what it stands on you know so um that's open for interpretation certainly okay thanks erico i think uh we can continue with your presentation great great Th yeah people please feel free um lifeline this is one of casey's favorites um i actually printed mugs and printed t-shirts which sold and uh um yeah this was um um the whole idea of you know heartbeat and what you see when you're in a hotel when uh, you're in a hospital and uh, and all that and certainly in the hospital it's a straight line with you know all the ups and downs and the beating and all that whatever um i, I didn't want it to be that linear you know it's linear um <laughs> and uh and just I, I, as I created this piece, I just fell more and more in love with it. It just, um, it spoke to me as it was being created um, and, and gave me a sense of, yeah, this is what I should be doing with myself in terms of art. Um, it, it, it really did help me to, to, to kind of set a direction for myself. Um, so um, yeah, I'm going to just keep going. Feel free to interrupt. I, 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 I'm no expert by any means in terms of any of this. This is all me hit and miss and just trying to, uh, how would I say, uh, exploring, you know, what's going on inside of me, inside my head, inside of my heart. I'm a very emotional person. I mean, I'm a very expressive in terms of my emotions. Um, Casey knows that I cry at the drop of a hat. I can cry watching TV programs or driving in the car listening to a, a sappy song and I cry like a baby. It's just, um, I just do. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Um, so here you asked about color. Um, this has a story. This has a story. Um, when I started painting, um, a couple of years after I'd been doing the painting for a while, um, I was at church and um, and someone came to the church who I had wronged years prior. And here I'm a choir director and here I'm, um, you know, I've been doing this for many years and think that I'm a good person and, and all that. And someone came to the church and saw me up there not knowing that this was my church and, and that I was the director. And at the end of the liturgy confronted me and asked me and shamed me and did it very discreetly so that it did not become um, a public display of humiliation. But I was definitely humiliated. Um, <laughs> here I am, a big cry baby that I just <laughs> told you guys I am. Um, and I left church that day feeling like that. Just, just cover me, hide me. Um, and didn't know what to do with myself. Spent that day at home, um, upset, sad, depressed. Um, and my pastor called because the person had talked to him. Um, just before coming to me. And he asked me um, if I was okay. And I explained what had happened and what I had done to this person um, and, and uh, or what I had done that caused this person so much pain years prior. And it had been, I don't know, 10, 12, maybe more years. Uh, and so he and I talked and it made me feel better, but 
I knew that I had to do something with that, with that sense of shame. And, um, and so I grabbed a canvas and I started painting. And this was not one of those that could be colorful, as you can see. It could not be bright colored, brightly anything. Um, but it was um, heartfelt and it helped me get through that. Um, I have since made peace with that person. And um, yeah, but <laughs> talk about uh, talk about emotions. This is one. This is a heavy one for me, and this one hangs at Inspiration Studios as a reminder uh, never to <laughs> never to let myself get into that kind of situation and again in the future. Um, I, I'm gonna go on unless you've got any comments or questions. We we do have some comments. Yeah. Um, yeah. Somebody was saying how brave of you. Um, another person really loves the brush strokes in this one. Okay. Um, we also have a couple of more general questions. Sure. Um, uh, they're asking about when you painted these. Are they recent pieces? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I guess I, I've, I've given some dates, but not enough. This would have been, um, if I'm not mistaken, this happened in, let's see, I said it. I retired in 2011. I started painting in 2012. So this would have been maybe a year later, maybe 2013 or 2014. So, you know, this is six or seven years ago when this took place. Um, and, and more generally, Erico, yeah. um, we have a question. Do you have the vision in your head first of what you're going to paint? And, and, and this one I did. This one I did. Oftentimes I don't. Like I said, family just came together. The Thanksgiving uh, chalice and plate and that those just came together. Um, uh, this one, yeah, I had a, I had an idea, so I took some of that gesso, some of that uh, paste, and just started swirling and 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 doing this to it, and and then took a air dryer to it to blue, to, to dry, dry it up in order to. But I didn't know what the final result was because that's just white on white until you start filling it in. Um, uh, but so in this case, yeah, I had some ideas of where I was going. I knew I wanted something that was going to cover my face, cover my head. And it turned out for me, when I see this, I see my arms, I see my torso, um, I see me on knees, you know, bended knees here, just kind of, you know, sh shame, shame. It's the perfect title for the piece. Oh, gosh. Thank you, um, Miracle. Sure, sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so more, um, in terms of, you know, sadness, it's one of those emotions comes around, uh, playing with watercolor. Uh, I thought, can I do faces? I was on a trip. Um, I went on a trip with, uh, good friends of mine, uh, um, uh, Petrina and Jaime Hurtado, who some of you know, and, uh, they, uh, we, we went to, yeah, Susan's the thumbs up, yeah. Uh, yeah, Joni's mom, Petrina, yeah. Um, and uh, we were in San Martin, and that's when I, I really got into watercolor. And I, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm looking at faces and seeing people and seeing things and wondering, can I do faces? I hadn't felt that I could ever paint faces and paint them well. Um, and so I wanted to try that. And I thought the easiest way to do it was, was to do it um, oh, speaking of Petrina, there's Petrina. Hi, Petrina. <laughs> um, and uh, I started doing uh, faces just as a practice thing. And I thought, wow, um, the, this is an interesting thing. I don't know what eyes look like when they're wide open. I don't know what eyes look like when they're half shielded and half colored, uh, covered. Um, but I, uh, so I, so I played. I played, uh, played with, with the watercolor and created uh, these pieces. And, and again, eh, expressing some sadness and whatnot, just to see, because that's um, some of what I was seeing around me. Um, and more of, of this sort of thing, uh, you know, quite uh, appropriate for, for uh, recent times, you know, unspoken, unheard um, with the whole... Um, all the uprisings, the Black Lives Matter and, and whatnot. And, and the resting was created. This is an acrylic piece, whereas uh, the unspoken, unheard is watercolor. So again, eyes and faces and whatever, I was playing with those. Um, I, uh, the, the other two, the beggar woman 
and resting were part of a, a theater production that I was directing. I directed a play called The House of Bernardo de Alba by Federico, Federico Garcia Lorca. Um, I did that at Inspiration Studios for the Village Playhouse, which is the theater company that's there, that's in my building. And, um, and so I, I, I wanted pieces that would represent um, you know, Picasso and Dali and those kinds of artists. And so these are, uh, these are the studies of those artists. Um, you know, I went online looking for Picasso paintings and, and you can see these fingers, it's kind of a Picasso uh, feature um, and, and, and Dali. And, um, and so I, I painted these to use in the play itself as background pieces, art pieces on the stage. And they were used there, but they were also used um, in another uh, theater production that I did in West Dallas. Trying to move my participants here so I can see my entire screen. Um, there we go. Um, other emotion, fear. There's stories behind all of these. You know, there's a story behind all of my paintings. And again, it's I, I, I'll certainly talk about you know how I create them, um, but the story is more important to me, I think, than anything else. Um, a place I used to live at. Um, uh, which some of you have been to. Um, I remember Oscar was there helping me doing some painting or tiling. I can't remember what it was before he moved out west. <laughs> you know, and Petrina has been there many times and Casey certainly has and Susan was there. Um, but um, the idea of fear, when I lived in that home and I love that house, um, someone tried to break into my house in the middle of the night. And I was upstairs in my bedroom. I heard this like someone trying to kick a door down and uh and it shook the heck out of me i uh woke up ran downstairs you know so automatic lights go on and scared them away but it left me with this sense of fear i was caged in my house i could not i could not sleep for weeks for about two weeks i couldn't sleep uh afraid that someone was going to come back um and um and I couldn't leave the house, you know, as long as you're afraid to be gone because somebody might go and break in while you're gone and afraid to be there because somebody might be break in while you're there sleeping. And so I was trapped. I was trapped. And I, <laughs> again, how do you deal with emotion when it's chewing you up? For me, this elect, this, this is the outlet for me. I'm able to to, to grab colors and paints and waters and, and, and acrylics and canvases and put it on canvas and get it out of my system. And after I created this piece, which ended up being about, oh, I don't know, maybe, I wanna say it's maybe 20 by 20. Um, and you can, I mean, I think you can see this person, this person with the shadows in the doorway, you know, and then here I am stuck in this cage, not able to do anything. Um, once I put this on paper, I was able to sleep. I was able to relax. I was able to, um, you know, I got past that. You know, I got past that fear, that scare. Um, the one on the right here, Eye of the Storm, um, has to do with what was the storm out east? Who can tell me that? Um, uh, the upper coast um, hurricane, uh, Sandy, was it? Maybe, or... Tropical storm or something that hit, hit the middle coast, mid uh, up, you know, uh, uh, northwest, uh, northeast coast. Are you thinking of like New York, New Jersey? Yeah, I think that was Sandy. Sandy, okay. And I remember watching a um, a telecast of um, uh, one of these fundraisers, you know, for relief uh, for for people the victims of that, and um, and I was just just amazed by the performances and the, the music and, and whatnot. And just sitting there listening to this presentation, it was probably a two or three hour telecast. And I went and I grabbed this huge, can this is a 36 by 36 canvas. And I started just swirling and swirling and grabbing color and swirling and swirling and realized, oh my gosh, this looks like a hurricane. This does look like a hurricane. Um, and the center, you know, calling it the eye of the storm. Uh, you know, people look at this when they see the actual piece and they say, oh my gosh, that looks like, that looks like an eye. It really does look like an eye. Um, 
and uh, yeah, it, it's colors wise, it's 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 one of my favorites. But then there's also this idea of purgatory. Oh my God, was I in a dark spot when I made that one? I was struggling. I don't know if it was Lent, and it's Lent right now. I was Wednesday was last week, and I I was in a dark place. I was having a hard time. I uh, you know once in a while depression kicks in, and uh, and again the way to get out of it for me is to put it on paper, put it on canvas. This is a 14 by 14 piece of wood. And this is painted on the back of it. Um, lots of scratches, lots of glued, uh, you know, the, the paste, the, the, the gesso paste and whatnot. And um, yeah, this is hanging at the studio <laughs> in a corner where I don't have to look at it very often. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dealing with fear and purgatory. Uh, Erico? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um... So we had a comment that uh, art can be cathartic, which you were talking uh, a little bit about. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you if you have anything to say um, in response to that. Well, that's I mean I guess that's what all of this is for me is that in terms of when when it's when um, when things are good, <laughs> you want to celebrate that, and I. And I certainly do celebrate that with color and with paintings and, and, and whatnot, but, you know, with, with music, with dance, with all that sort of thing. Um, when, for me, when I'm having a hard time, when I'm doubting my life and my future and my past and, and, and having fears and having all these negative sorts of things, then, yeah, for me to, uh, the, the, the therapeutic component of this for me is, is getting it all on a canvas or getting it on paper. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help me grow and help me build and help me get past that. I, I struggled this past summer with, um, and some people here know this, um, I had surgery last year, last June, and it, um, it really, really, really did a job on me um, to the point where all I could do was cry, like I'm doing now. All I could do was cry. Talking to anybody, all I could do was cry because the recovery was horrible. And I was in, in severe pain for a long time. Um, and thankfully, people, good friends, and, and Casey saved my life. Um, but other people, too, helped to keep me afloat and keep me awake. And I painted some pieces. And you're going to see in a couple of minutes uh, uh, one of the pieces I created during that time period because... I needed to release that. I needed to release that that pain and that sorrow and that sadness. I ended up in therapy and did a, a month long therapy thing online, virtual, and it helped. Uh, but creating art was also part of that. Um, so, so yeah, um, I guess if that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, I also just want to share another comment. Um, yeah. You are so beautiful to be emotional and to share your true self. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I knew this would happen. So then I tell you this would happen. Doggone it. <laughs> oh, geez. A big emotional sap. So here's part of what I just went through. Although Between a Rock and a Hard Place was created uh, a few years back. Um, um, that, was, that was a tough time. Uh, but Untimes was the one that I did while I was in recovery and watching things like all the protests on TV and all those discussions and whatnot. And, um, you know, it, it started off as just an experiment with color. And I thought, okay, I'm going to create this face. And the more I played with it, the more I, I drew lines. And, and uh, you know, there's all the color there, which, you know, should maybe – indicate some kind of a joy, some kind of, of whatnot. But then you see the fine lines. I, I Hopefully on your screens, you can see them, which were all done with a very light felt marker. Uh, outlining, uh, I simply took wherever there was color and outlined that piece of color to kind of break it all up. Um, you can see down here what ended up looking to me like, um, like teepees or flames. Her face turned into the Statue of Liberty. And suddenly I knew, I gotta get rid of the torch. Just toss the torch. These are untimes, these are unfriendly times, unwanted times, un, un, I mean, just un, un, you know, uh, 
unfathomable times um, that we were going through this past summer. And uh, and getting this on canvas was 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 good. It was cathartic for me. Um, yeah, <laughs> between a rock and a hard place is a so uh, untimes is acrylic. Between a rock and a hard place is uh, watercolor, and uh, I love that piece. I just love that piece. Casey, I found it. It's hanging in my back bedroom here. <laughs> we were trying to figure out where this was the other day. Um, so I'm moving on. Too. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I love it too, Erica. Uh, who is that? Who is that? Rosemary. Oh, my sister. That's my sister. <laughs> Hi, my sister. That's my Hi, sister sweetie. in Florida. Hi, yep. sweetie. <laughs> I had seen that one. It's beautiful. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, anger and frustration. That's what that was. Um, I participated in an art exhibit at, oh, gosh, what's the name of the church? Um, shoot. Down on Juno. Uh, uh, um, uh, Non-denominational. Um, oh my gosh, can't remember now. Um, anyway, uh, there was an exhibit there, um, and a woman uh, whose last name is Sacken, um, I can't remember what her first name is right now, had an exhibit. She had been visiting countries uh, and done photographs of women in underprivileged countries or uh, some of the third world countries, Central America, South America, uh, Africa, and had this amazing exhibit of these just beautiful images of of women working and you know selling their goods and creating clothing and painting and and and, and weaving and i went home after we shared the space she had certain walls in the church and i had the other walls and when i saw her pieces i went home that night and i created less floating stuff the, the 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 flower women um this was simple quick strokes with multiple pieces, uh, you know, the, the brush paint uh, dipped in multiple colors, and then whoosh, 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 whoosh. I think I probably created this in maybe 30 minutes on a black canvas. And um, it was just it was so cool. And uh, and I took it the next day to, 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 to hang it with my exhibit. And she was so impressed, she bought the piece from me on the spot, <laughs> which was really a wonderful compliment. I and mean, it was my compliment to her of her work. And yet, you know, her purchasing it was just a wonderful gift to me. Uh, keeping watch over Pueblo. We go, like I've mentioned before, Petrina and her husband and I have gone to many conferences in the Southwest. And uh, and so very much inspired by, by the colors of the Southwest and by the, uh, the faith and the uh, of the people and and whatnot, so that was where you know the idea of hope and excitement. Um, you know, I, I pulled these into that title, into that that emotion, because I think that's what that's what I was feeling at the time when I was creating these pieces. Erica, yes, ma'am. Um, we're getting a lot of positive comments on these, and yeah. there was a question: um, Was the church on Juno Village Church? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Village Church, thank you, that's it. Thank you, I couldn't remember the name. Across from the Harp, Cootie Corner or whatever from, is it the Harp, is that what they called? Yeah, yeah, it's there, that's the church. And uh, yeah, I've done a, I had a couple of, a few exhibits there, which is very nice. They, they do some great, great stuff. Um, okay. <sighs> yeah, back to joy and excitement. Um, I did a play that uh, uh, I, I directed a play called The Cemetery Club uh, for the West Dallas Players a couple of years back. And as part of that, um, you know, because I, I have this, you know, you know I'm, <laughs> I'm a gay Catholic man who's fascinated by women's issues or whatnot. Um, and so I, uh, you know, I did the Hustle Bernard the Alba, which was written by a gay man, you know, Federico Garcia Lorca. And it's all women and women's studies and women, whatever. And Caroline, I think Caroline is on here, I think somewhere where she was. And um, uh, and she was, oh, there she is. And she was in that play. Um, and so then I had the opportunity after that, I was asked to direct um, the Cemetery Club about uh, three Jewish widows who, um, who meet, who, who met at the cemetery where their husbands were, were buried and became friends. Well, the idea of three women 
it's just suddenly I started pulling in my pieces, my art pieces that I had done for Bernardo Alba. And uh, I had to create this living room for, for the lead person in the play. Um, and I decided I was going to put the entire cast and audience on stage. And so we did it in the round in a huge auditorium, on a huge auditorium stage. And that stage became her living room. Well, I wanted it decorated with art that would be meaningful to her. So I created these pieces, Three Holy Women, um, Sunrise Celebration. Um, I, as I did with Picasso, the Picasso pieces earlier, Resting and, and, and the Dali and whatnot, I, I went online and said, okay, I want images of three women. And oh my gosh, there's lots out there, lots out there. And so I would take an image and then I'd start painting my version of that. Um, and uh, and that's, what, that's where these come from. Uh, and they were fun and colorful and, and um, uh, and they're big, they're big pieces. This, uh, the Sunrise Celebration is one of the largest ones I've ever painted, I think. Um, and they're hanging at Inspiration Studios right now. Um, they've been part of many exhibits and um, yeah. So color, back to color and excitement and joyful, uh, you know, joyful participation in life. Huh. Petrina, your husband would like to hear that expression. <laughs> <laughs> which all leads to this, um, you know, um, our life is uh, a challenge at times. And it's, uh, it's something that, you know, is precious and, um, <clears throat> and difficult at times. Um, I made a painting, Petrina, I'm sorry, I didn't include yours on here. I painted a piece for Petrina for Christmas. And it's a, uh, a woman just kind of like this, but arms straight up, you know, giving praise. Um, and, uh, and then I painted this one for another friend, for Lucy, um, and uh, who has struggled over the past few years um, and, and who lives by faith. Um, and so this was her Christmas present from me. Um, <clears throat> these pieces are just becoming uh, just so cool for me in that I, you know, we're back to that notion that I don't do faces well. Um, and so, you know, if, if I go back to these, you know, there's no real faces here. I mean, there's kind of a face, but not really. Um, I don't know where else I had faces, no faces there, but the images are there of the people. And, and the idea that, 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 that a silhouette can say so much um, and, and be so much um, is kind of, you know, part of, of what I do with my art. Um, uh, my art is meant to inspire and it's meant to give me, like I said, give me some sense of, of, of peace and calm and, and keep me focused. Um, and so that's, that's what this is. You know, I paint, and try to stick to it, try to stick with my faith and my, my ideas of what my faith is, because it's a struggle at times, especially nowadays when it's difficult to get to church. It's difficult to, to be part of a community that I was a, a major part of for 40 some years. Um, so um, I, I think I'm going to stop here. <laughs> um, for those of you who need any of my contact info, here it is. Look at this colors. Look at these this chair, I love my chair. The Village Playhouse people were gonna throw this baby out. It's a little desk chair, like a typical wood teacher desk chair. And I thought, no, I grabbed it, brought it home and I played with this uh, during the pandemic. This is one of the pieces I painted over, uh, I wanna say last, maybe last spring, last summer. And, uh, and it sits here in my living room and I, I look at it every day. Um, so um, yeah. I, Thanks for being here. If you've got questions, now's the time to ask. If you've got comments, turn on your microphone and make them. <laughs> I really, really like uh, this chair piece you made. It's It has uh, a little bit like Jean-Michael Pescati. 
Well, see now, now, John, you would know those names and I don't. I'm a self-taught artist. You have studied like crazy. Uh, John has exhibited at my uh, at Inspiration Studios. He had exhibit uh, about three years ago, I want to say. And it was well, Mythos. What was it? Mythos. What was the title? Um, Mythos Fantasia. Yes. Uh, so, Mythos Fantasia. Mythos Fantasia. He creates these pieces that are half human and half animal, I guess. Uh, uh, um, a, a magical creature or a, there you go and he had a wonderful exhibit at inspiration studios a few years back and he continues to uh to paint and to be in awe of, of all this but you do a lot more studying than i do of this stuff uh you know again i i i paint from whatever is here and once in a while i'm inspired to look up an artist um but i don't do it a lot <laughs> you know, i should no, I, you're still good anyway i well, thanks, John. Painting from the heart is uh, basically we're all artists. Uh, yes. Starting. Good point. Yes. Very good. So, er Erico, I wasn't aware. Yeah. That, Mandy. Well, my, my question is this like, what made you want to go into visual art? I, mean, well, when I, I knew you, you were so into theater and so into dance. And, and, and I still do those things. So, that was it. Yeah. That's part of it. During, um, uh, Mandy was a student at the High School of the Arts when I was there for my, uh, uh, as an assistant principal, that was my very first um, uh, school assignment as an assistant principal, uh, High School of the Arts, I was there for four years, and I was, uh, back then I was doing a lot of theater in the community, community theater um, with the Village Playhouse and with other companies, and I directed a dance company, a, a dance troupe rather, the co-directed dance troupe with uh, my good friend, Mary Lou DeFino. And um, we did the flamenco and uh, folk dances from Spain, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. And, uh, and then I, I played the- I wanted your dance pieces too. And you were, I was gonna say that. And so I was asked to choreograph some stuff for, the, for one of the dance concerts at the High School of the Arts. And so I chose two Puerto Rican dances to do, I had the costumes the whole bit. And uh, at auditions, I wanted to make sure that I included anyone who, uh, who, who wanted to be in, in, in those pieces. And so I, uh, Mandy was one of the people who ended up in my uh, two Puerto Rican dance pieces. And that was, that was fun. Yes, my, so what happened there, your question's right on because at the High School of the Arts, as a school administrator, as an assistant principal, you're, you're required to do classroom observations and teacher evaluations and all that sort of thing of all you know, a variety of teachers, and you're assigned a certain number of teachers, you go through the list with the principal or the other administrators, and you choose, you pick and choose. Well, um, I had no problem, uh, you know, going into classrooms for with, with uh, English or math or Spanish, you know, whatever, those evaluations, but, and even theater and, and dance, because I had enough of a background in that in terms of what I was looking at and watching and watching for. Te good teaching is good teaching. No matter what, good teaching is good teaching. That's what you look for. But in visual art, my difficulty was that I could not figure out uh, very often what the ultimate goal was. When a teacher was trying to give kids a lesson in art, in creation of art, I struggled because I thought even listening to the objective, it's like, I, I don't get that. I don't get that. Um, you know, why is it important to draw a straight line, you know? And so that's why I decided when I took the second sabbatical to do a visual art, to go to school and take graduate credits in visual art, because I did not know how to evaluate a visual arts teacher. So if you remember uh, Podolsky, yes. Mr. Podolsky, he was one of my teachers. Yes, he was, you know, and he was great, but you couldn't speak a word in his class. Absolute silence. And if you spoke up, said anything, if you said boo, you were out of the classroom. And then I had to deal with you in terms of discipline. You know, it's like, why? I don't get it. The problem was for me that I didn't understand it. And what I learned in those 20 grad credits at UWM and one of the classes you were in too, was that it's all about problem solving. That's it. It's all about problem solving. And if students can learn to problem solve in art, oh my gosh, that applies to so many other areas in their life. And that's, that was the aha for me. From then on, oh my gosh, going into an art classroom, it was fascinating. It was fascinating for me to do observations of teachers in the visual art. So that's what inspired me to go into art when I retired, because it's the one thing that I had not explored personally in terms of creation of art. I had done theater, I had done dance, I had done music, 
I was never, I had never created visual art. And so when I retired, I thought that's the one area I want to explore more. So I started painting. Great Very question. Cool. Thanks, Mandy. Who else? And you got questions out there, I'm sure. I, I just want, I just want to say, Erico, um, I, 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 I'm an artist as well of sorts, and I, yeah. I see a great deal of improvement over the years in your art. Yeah. I, I just love the last, the last half a dozen slides so much. So, yeah. and, I, and I'm, I'm glad that I listened in tonight because um, learning so much about you, it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, Grace. I appreciate that. Uh, Grace is uh, uh, Grand Inspiration Studios. Well, well, I guess last year was her first time there, maybe? or Yeah. And so she came in, and then um, as a result of visiting Inspiration Studios, and even oh, maybe part of it was she wrote reviews of a few of the art exhibits that were at Inspiration Studios for the Shepherd. Yes, for the Shepherd Express. Um, and then, uh, and also she does photography of her own. So we're looking at some point at some uh, of having an exhibit of, of, of her own art there um, at some point, uh, her, her photography. Uh, but yes, one of the things, Grace, for me is that I'm an open book. I mean, I really am an open book and I always have been. And it's, you know, sometimes it's a downfall. Sometimes it gets me into a lot of trouble because I can't keep my mouth shut. Uh, and, but most times it pays off. Most times people are endeared to me and realize that I'm being genuine, you know, and that's what draws people into Inspiration Studios. So, but, but thank you. I, I did go to one feedback session through MARN, Milwaukee Artist Resource Network, way back in my early days. I went to a, a critique session um, and showed a variety of, of slides of my art pieces. And uh, they had some interesting comments, the people who were in that group, a small, small group, and they had some interesting comments. And one was that, because uh, I was starting to do some watercolor things back there, but they looked very flat, um, was the, the word, was the express, they were flat. Whereas my acrylic pieces were all much more, well, not three-dimensional, but more dimensional, I guess. I don't know what other word to use it. Um, what's the opposite of flat, you know? <laughs> when you're talking about something that is two-dimensional. Um, so I appreciate that. I have watched uh, during painting parties that Lynn, that um, Diane Ulazowski has led, and I, I thought I saw Diane on here, but I don't see her face. So that's Diane. I see a Diane here, but I'm not sure who that is. Um, and uh, But through painting parties and watching how she creates and looking at pieces like, I mean, Linnea's stuff is amazing. Hi, Linnea. Uh, Linnea. Um, and I, I, so I, so I pick up on that, you know, again, I'm not, I don't have formal training as such, but I pick up on bits and pieces and things that I see. And, and so, yeah, thank you for the compliment because I, I, I feel like I've, I've, I've grown, <laughs> I've grown. All right. Well, I think we're about at time, uh, unless anybody has any other questions that they want to ask now, I think, uh, thank you. I don't have a question, but it's so good to see you, Erica. <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Oh my gosh, That's it's great tough. to see you. I miss yeah. you. I, miss I keep you. wanting to get together with you, and I just can't ever connect. We got to do it. We I will. don't live that far from you. Yeah, we will. We will. So, um, I was watching, taking notes, and photographing because I'm sending. I was sending messages to my two granddaughters tonight. Um, in Denver, in, uh, in, uh, one in Denver, yeah. one in Oklahoma. And yeah. both of them are really, really struggling with their identity. Oh. I mean, really struggling. Okay. Yeah. So it's the first night that I kept them online communicating with me through their comments about your artwork from when you started until um, just a few minutes ago. Okay. They were responding to, oh, that's cool. Oh, what a good <laughs> idea. Oh, okay. Thanks, Graham. It's the first time 
we have had a real dialogue about the importance of art and what they want to do, but they're afraid. Nice. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. That's great feedback. Wow. Oh, how cool. <laughs> Future artists. It's so important. It's so important. And we keep downplaying it in schools and whatnot. And I, oh my gosh, it's just, oh, what a shame. Because yeah, they've lost their way in this virtual world for a year. They're lost. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I so get it. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thank you to everyone. I think I'm going to end it here. Um, we appreciate your joining us. And thank you, Erico. This has been really lovely. You are a beautiful soul. And thank you for sharing all of this. Um, thank you us. so much. Uh, if anyone wants to get a hold of me at any point, look me up at Inspiration Studios. And there's, I, I didn't think to include my blog spot on there, which has a lot more artwork. But you can, it's Erico Ortiz at blog, Erico's Gallery at blogspot.com. I think that's what it is. So. And there's a link to it at Inspiration Studios in that in that site too. But thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, it's, it's, uh, 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 you said you were going to re you were recording this, and so for people who have not seen this or who might want to, what are they going to do, Sarah? Uh, well, it'll be on the library's YouTube um, channel, and I can send a link to participants. Um, or I could send it to you if you want to share it that way too for people. Um, but we will we will make sure to get the word out too because we want people to be. Yeah, there. if you send it because I don't know who all the participants were. I mean, I don't have a list of all of them, so you do. So maybe if you send that, that'd be great. But yeah, so people just be aware that, that that this has been recorded and it's out there for other people to view at other times if they want to. If you know somebody else who might may want to um, to see it, so. But thanks, thanks for being here. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank Kisses, you. hugs. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye.